Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in the educational tradition of this channel I am starting a series of learning things through video games but this time we're doing it with a twist. In this new series I decided to teach you how to actually learn to make your own video games rather than showing you what you can learn by playing them. This first tutorial series will take you through an excellent free software called Stencil and you will learn all you need to know on how to start making your own fun amazing two-dimensional games that will hopefully one day lead you to become a full-time game developer. Welcome to What The Math. And let's start with this first part where we're going to basically go through the essentials. We're going to install Stencil, we're going to get all the important tools that you need to create your own successful video game. And of course, uh, look at some of the things that you need to know about video game creation. Now, I'm in no way a master, and honestly, I'm technically still a beginner myself, but uh, I have been following video game creation for several years now. I've been kind of uh, going through various free and paid tools on, you know, trying to create my own video games, but I've kind of realized that I'm just not really that creative and I'm really not that good at it, but I am kind of a little bit better at teaching things and I figured, you know what, I would rather just teach you guys, you wonderful people, to make your own games and maybe one day you'll make something amazing and become super famous. And all of this actually came to me as an inspiration early in 2016 when essentially I found out about this game, Stardew Valley. If you've never heard of this game, um, it's a pretty interesting two-dimensional game. It wasn't actually ma made with stencil, but um, it, you can totally make it with stencil. It has all the sort of similar graphics and similar sort of... Uh, gameplay elements that you can definitely develop in stencil, but the important thing about this game is that it has become a hit and it was one of the, and still actually is, one of the most sold games on Steam. It has sold millions and millions of copies. I think it has sold millions of copies if that's, I, I hope I'm correct here, but the important, the most important thing about it is that it was made by one person. It was a single person that has made this. It was a developer that worked on this for four years and he was actually doing it as a kind of a, you know, to basically improve his resume. He kind of just wanted to kind of make himself uh, seem better when applying for jobs out there but at the end of all of this he uh, created this beautiful masterpiece that essentially changed the way we think about game developing or, the, or at least I think about game developing uh, making it possible for a single person to create a hit and I know I'm not that person because I'm just kind of lazy and not really that creative but I think you are I think maybe the person who's watching this video right now Maybe you'll be able to make the next Stardew Valley and this tutorial will kind of guide you through all of the important stuff and at least uh, put you on the path of, you know, how to become better at this. Anyway, so Stencil. Go to stencil.com and right here you'll see the website that has uh, this kind of a logo, create amazing games without code. Not, not exactly true, there is coding in this, so this will actually teach you quite, quite a lot about coding, uh, but in a very, very simple approach using uh, something similar to um, Google's Blockly, which is a visual sort of coding design. But as you can see, uh, you'll be able to essentially create, and I'm sorry for going through really, really fast through this, I know some of you said that uh, you may get vertigo from <laughs> me scrolling a lot, but anyway, uh, so we're basically going going to take a look at two-dimensional two games and uh, they allow you to, uh, this program allows you to create games for anything from a smartphone to essentially um, flash-based animation or a flash-based game and uh, HTML games and of course PC games that you can compile and um, play on your PC or, or on your Mac of course. And to start all of this you basically have to click on download so so download the software right now, I'm going to wait for you, or I guess uh, you can pause uh, the video. And um, here's the important thing about Stencil. So it's free for you to start, it's free for you to publish to the web, and basically as long as you're not making money, you're free to use this as much as you want. However, if you actually decide to become a professional and want to uh, basically want to make money from your game, you will have to sign up for either Indie or Studio. I'm guessing you're going to be signing up for this. Basically this is if you want to make money from your game, like for example, one of the games I showed you in the intro, which is also a very, very popular game, is Lakeview Cabin. It has actually made uh, quite a lot of money. It uh, has created sort of like a, a YouTube phenomenon where many YouTubers play this game. And uh, for this game, uh, even though originally it was a free game t you could play on... Um, in your browser. Uh, now you can essentially play it on Steam, you can play it on your computer, but it has uh, become an indie game, so you would have to sign up for this sort of payment where you pay $100 a year and you can do whatever you want with your game and you can make as much money as you want. But we are of course just doing this. This is what I have, this is what you should have. Uh, this allows you to basically do everything you, you want to do just to learn. Now, in the beginning, when you just start, you um, especially if, uh, while you're waiting for your download, you may also click on this button right here, help button, 
um, it kind of gives you an idea, um, you know, where you want to go, especially um, gives you some crash courses here. This is a very, very cool crash course to go through. It gives you uh, the basic uh, guidelines and basic sort of steps on how to create a successful game. It doesn't take very long to finish. I think it took me less than an hour. But I'm basically, what I'm going to do is uh, take you through some more advanced stuff, but we're also going to start with the basics as well. Uh, we're kind of going to go through this, actually, the full guide, but in sort of my own words. I'm going to take you through all of this and give you an idea of how to, you know, start your game, how to then publish your game, and, you know, how to troubleshoot and so on. Uh, so, let's begin. Oh, and by the way, if you are a teacher or if you're somehow um, connected to education, there is this education button. And I have actually used this in class, and it's absolutely brilliant, albeit, uh, unfortunately, a little bit buggy. But if you're a teacher, you can figure this out. Uh, there's a kit for a teacher, and there's also actually pre-made lessons where um, you can kind of go through these six different uh, lesson plans that allow your students to kind of create their own uh, miniature games and allow them to uh, become the developers. It's kind of fun. It's actually very, very easy to follow. And... Uh, uh, includes teaching guides and also student activities, but I'm not going through this, uh, mostly because, A, like I said, um, it's sort of for the older version of Stencil, and it doesn't really work as well on, on newer Stencil, and also there is a few mistakes and bugs in there. Uh, hopefully they'll fix them one day, but um, we're going to just do our own thing. And uh, the version of Stencil I'm using right now is version 3.4.0 uh, Beta 4. Uh, this is, did I say Beta again? I meant beta for. Anyway, so this is uh, the most recent version that I could download. It could be different for you. Uh, it doesn't really matter. I don't think many things will change, but there might be new additions in the future. So when you download Stencil, you'll see something like this. When you open it up, it says Welcome Center. You may not have uh, as many files here. This is just from projects I did with my class before. Uh, as you can see, I didn't name them properly. This is actually lesson number one. Make sure you always name things correctly. The reason why is that since I named these like PR4 and whatever, hello, I don't even know what these are anymore. If I were to come back to my game after I stopped developing it for a few months, I will not even know where to start. If you name them correctly, and naming actually is really, really important. If you name things correctly, you'll remind yourself in the future when you come back to things what those things are. Anyway, so uh, when you start, you'll have this. There's also a button right here, Start Crash Course. You may want to go through this. You don't have to. I'm not going to do this again, but it's essentially just a tutorial on the interface and, and so on. Um, this is essentially where all of your games will be located, and these are the games you're making. Uh, there's also something called kits. These are kind of like the pre-made behaviors for different characters, for different, um, I guess, games in a sense, where uh, instead of programming everything from scratch, you can download, like, for example, this jump and run kit. What this allows you to do is you can then use this to assign it to your characters, and they'll instantly learn how to run and how to jump by pressing various buttons. You can also modify this, of course, and here just by clicking on it, I can kind of see uh, all kinds of different behaviors that it already has for my actors. Like, for example, die in a pit. This is uh, sort of a, an, an additional code that will uh, kill your character if he or she falls into a pit of abyss. Also, there's jumping, there's a lot of things, because when you just start, obviously your, your, um, your actors, your characters will not be able to do anything. You have to teach them everything from scratch by essentially writing code. And so to get these kits, which are kind of, I guess, time savers, although we're not actually going to be using a lot of these because we'll do things from scratch, uh, but um, if you want to download these and save yourself some time, the most important button here is this, Stencil Forge. There's another button called Stencilpedia, and what this does is open up um, essentially the page we've been to before, help page. It's kind of like a Wikipedia, but I guess it's called Stencilpedia. Uh, here you can kind of get some sample games, you can get some other guides and stuff, but uh, we're not doing this. We're clicking on Stencil Forge. Stencil Forge is a really, really excellent resource. You do have to log in and create an account, but once you do, you'll be able to essentially download all kinds of stuff. Uh, you can totally use this. I totally recommend you to use this if you're just starting just to learn and to save yourself some time. Like, for example, you can download actor types, which are essentially pre-made characters or character models in this case. So, like, for example, a crocodile that someone drew and already pre-made for you. Some of these are animated. Like, for example, I think this one is animated. Although it doesn't actually show here, but uh, a lot of these actor types um, are essentially um, pre-made characters. So if you just want to try something and you want something like a banana, you can go in here and download it. There's also something called behaviors. Um, and these are pre-made codes that will once again save you some time. 
uh, that will essentially do something that you may want them to do. Like, for example, this one here does something called door behavior. I don't exactly know what this is, but if you click on it, it says it right here, attach this behavior to an exit door to detect player collisions. So there's things like that that you can already download. Uh, this is actually a really cool thing called resource pack, which um, obviously I already had one of them installed. I had platform of movement installed, uh, but uh, this is essentially a pack that, uh, depending on the game you make, will allow you to save time by adding certain types of codes already. Like for example, we're going to be actually creating a space game because I figured space games are probably my most favorite genre and I've reviewed so many, so why not make our own space game? Um, this right here, which is actually, I'm gonna download this right now, is a space shooter action pack. It's uh, a pre-made, selection of codes that, uh, or behaviors that allow you to instantly add them to your characters. Like, for example, you can teach your character how to fire bullets, how to do something on key press, how to die after a certain time, and how to switch animations. Um, I don't exactly know what uh, this does yet, but there's clearly quite a lot of really cool things inside of this. Like, firing weapon is pro probably pretty important, bullet wave. And uh, we might actually take a look at this at the end of the series, uh, because these are the more important, the more advanced sort of uh, creations that you may want to consider getting. Uh, but for now, we're going to ignore them. Now, the important things here, however, are these. First of all, there is something called backgrounds, and these are actually your, um, essentially your level backgrounds, what you have in the backgrounds when you play in the game. And these are pre-made for you already. Now this is actually something that I'll probably be using because uh, I'm not really that good at art and you know downloading free resources is always sort of a, a big thing for me. So I might actually just get one of these, like for example uh, that one with stars looks pretty nice. So I might actually just get that and use that as a background for my game as well. And this is actually what it looks like here. Uh, it looks, it look, looks pretty nice. There's even some sort of an epic universe background music I think. Or maybe that's just this. Anyway, so there's backgrounds here, there's fonts that you can also use and download. And these are obviously different kinds of uh, text that you can use in your game. Like, for example, if you want to use some sort of a 2D Minecraft, uh, or if you want to make a 2D Minecraft, you can get this Minecraft here font. Um, sounds is obviously sounds. It's different um, sound effects. But I'm also going to show you different websites that you can use to um, essentially get free sounds and free music for your game. Uh, tile sets is really, really important. This is essentially the... Uh, different environmental pixels, or I guess environmental blocks that you'll be using to create your levels. These are uh, essentially your bread and butter in every game. We're going to get some kind of a good good tile set, or we might actually just download it from, from the web, but there's some pre-made ones here that we might consider getting, although I don't know if there's anything space related. Let's look it up. So for space, there isn't that much. There's Mars and Duna space tile sets, and also something called space right here. Oh, it doesn't actually have any screenshots, and I think it's just this. So that's a little bit too simple. We might have to go online and get a tile set. Uh, to find these, uh, we'll need to just Google it up. It's not very difficult, and I'll show you. There's also these other things like creations, which you can kind of use to teach yourself even more. Like, for example, these teaching demos, which are essentially like pre-made games. Like someone has made a Flappy Bird arcade, which is essentially a bare bones Flappy Bird game that already works, but you can obviously use this as a kind of a learning experience to, you know, how to make Flappy Bird games and how to essentially create something similar and then add, add um, more different things to it. And so you can kind of go through these as well. Um, and so these ones we're not going to focus too much on. Um, kits and extensions are, I'm not really familiar with, but I don't think they're in that important for what we're trying to do. Extensions are actually um, different additional um, app thingies that you can include in your game. Like for example, if you want to uh, have a resource monitor or save screenshot button, or if you want to have ads in your game that will basically make you money. This is of course when you go professional, uh, you can add different extensions. There's actually more of them. If you go to welcoming center and if you click on extensions, it will open a website here where you can kind of see different additional actually quite a lot of additional extensions, like for example, uh, this right here, AdMob, I believe this is to um, add different uh, ads into your game so that you can actually make money. If I'm wrong about this, please correct me, but I, I've never used these, but I just know that this is essentially how you can add different um, ads into your game. Not that I'm trying to actually encourage you to do this, because ads are obviously kind of annoying in games. Anyway, so this is a stencil forge button, super important, we'll get back to it in a second. Uh, another important button, or I guess uh, drop down is right here. 
This is something that uh, we'll be using later on, but this allows you to select the platform that you want to make your game for. We're actually just going to use Flash Player just because we're going to be testing our games on the computer. But if you want to create an, uh, a game that works in a browser, HTML5, you can use this. This will actually completely uh, change the way that the game is rendered. It's going to be rendered specifically for HTML5 and you can then include it on your website. Or if you want to make uh, a Windows game, an Android game, or iOS game, which I don't actually have here because I don't have the extension installed, but I believe if you're using Mac, they already have like a whole long dropdown that has the, uh, the pre-installed extensions for different platforms. Now, so that's the interface basics. Uh, obviously, we're going to be mostly using this right here, and we're actually just going to create our game by clicking this button in, in the next part. Uh, but before I finish this video, I actually wanted to show you some other resources that you can use um, when creating your game. And the most important for me personally is this right here, Piscal. Uh, I suggest log logging in because this will allow you to save your creations, but what this is, is essentially a little um, website slash app, I guess it's a website app, that allows you to create pixelated art essentially in seconds. It's super, super easy. Even a person that has absolutely no art skills like myself can actually make relatively okay looking things by essentially, well, so you have this like Photoshop-like layout or I guess paint-like layout uh, where you can kind of essentially create anything you want. And we're going to make our character using this. We're going to create our spaceship, which is going to be our main character, using this and using, I don't even know what this is anymore. I think it's a person, but it suddenly changed into some sort of a tree. Uh, tree with hands. Anyway, so uh, Pisco is a super, super essential app for us. It's absolutely free. It's amazing. I'm actually surprised that it hasn't really been used a lot more. And I absolutely adore the fact that there's no ads on it. Uh, but yeah, get it or no, not get it, but to save this uh, website. It's called PiscoApp.com. And obviously this is a, uh, the link for this is in the description below. Uh, like once again, log in, make sure you have a, a, an account. So that way you'll be able to save your work and not lose it in case something happens. And this allows you to not only create a pixelated art, but actually create animated art. Isn't that awesome? You can actually create animations by doing this, by duplicating different frames and changing them a little bit. So now look at that. I have a blinking tree, the tree that blinks. Isn't that awesome? Anywho, so that's Pisco. That's super important. And the other important website is called incompetech.com, uh, also in the description below. So it has a lot of really cool free stuff and it's actually made by a single person whose name is Kevin McLeod, and you may have never heard of him, but he is essentially everywhere. Every single YouTuber, a lot of different indie games, a lot of different indie movies, and even professional movies use his work, his music. He has tons and tons of music. And his music is absolutely royalty free. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of, not most of the music that I use is also made by him. He's an amazing person. He's made, he's won many awards for essentially changing the way music industry works. Um, and here you can go through the full search if you already know something that you're looking for. If you have no idea what you want, you can go through the collection by theme or by uh, genre. Uh, like for example, you can choose some kind of an awesome electronic music by just clicking on this and listening to it. And there you go. And then you can download this as an MP3 and use it in your project. And the only one thing we're missing is, of course, sound effects. So this is like things like, you know, firing a laser, explosions. And there's a lot of uh, different uh, websites that allow you to essentially get free uh, sound effects. Uh, you can kind of just look them up by typing free sound effects. Uh, but the one that I'm going to kind of use here is possibly going to be freesound.org or audioblocks.com. A lot of these sound effects are uh, really high quality. A lot of them are pretty good, actually. A lot better than you can make by yourself, obviously. And uh, so there's things like, you know, camera sound, uh, low air blow whoosh, deep fast whoosh, and so on. And so, uh, and or here on, um, on the other website called freesound.org, you can find some uh, really cool sound effects from space, for example, by just clicking on that. And there we go. A laser sound. This is what I was looking for. Perfect. So this is something we'll be using in the future when we need a laser sound. So uh, quite a lot of different sound effects websites out there. Um, not as many for music. Really, there's kind of just Incompetech that I think is absolutely brilliant. There's a few other ones that you can find, but 
If you just want a simple tune for your game, and if you want something high quality, Incompetech is where it's at. There's like thousands of them, and they're all free. And if you want to use Kevin's uh, music in your project, you just have to mention his name somewhere. It doesn't even have to be on the front page or anything. Um, and if you actually don't want to mention his name, I believe each song is super, super cheap. Then you don't have to mention anything. And there you go. So one piece of music is $30 and you can do whatever you want with it. Uh, two pieces, 25, three or more, 20 each. Um, a lot of famous games actually use this. Kerbal Space Program is entirely in Competech. I don't know if you knew this, but everything on uh, in Kerbal Space Program is essentially in Competech music. I know that they have some amazing music and I had no idea it was actually from here until I found all of their songs here. And so uh, there you go. So it's a pretty interesting site. But uh, we'll, we'll use this later on when we're actually adding music and sounds. For now, we just have to create a game. And we'll do this in the next video where we'll start our new game. And I'll show you what's important when you're developing a video game. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this so far, uh, do subscribe if you still haven't. Share this with your friends who you think may want to learn how to make video games. And uh, obviously, leave a comment about what you think I may have missed. If you have any other resources I should include in the next video. And of course, mention some other apps that you know, just like Stencil, that might be good for some future series. I'm already planning to do one on Construct 2 and possibly another one on Unity, but this will be sometime in the future. For now, we're going to focus on Stencil. And once again, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Game you later, guys. Bye-bye.